So Lit Mobile just sent me this remote. I'm excited. Let's take a, just kidding. Hey guys, welcome back for another video. Today I've got a comparison between the latest Harmony remote, the Elite, versus the one that it replaced, which is really similar, that a lot of people have, the Ultimate One. And I've been using this for a long time. Got this a short time ago, just to see which one I would like better. And spoiler alert, you know I like parts of both of them. Neither one is the best remote. It's really gonna depend on what other equipment you're using and exactly how you use them. I'm gonna go through a lot of stuff here and some will be a little advanced, some will be very basic, but this is gonna be for, hey, do you want a remote control to control all of your not only home theater devices, but your smart home stuff too? Do you already have one of these and you're wondering, should you upgrade? They're, these aren't cheap. A lot of people have this and they're wondering if they should upgrade. I'm gonna help try to answer those questions. For those of you that are just dipping your toes into universal remote controls, I'm gonna also tell you about some other options and go through the whole Harmony system. So first of all, what is this remote? What is the point of having something like this? First thing you're gonna notice is they have touch screens. And yes, they are touch screens. Don't think of them as <laughs> really modern touch screens. This one is definitely better than this one, but neither one is even like a phone. Neither one is really super responsive. So you can swipe your finger on them and you know, there's a delay. It's not in sync like a modern cell phone, anything like that. This one, you just don't see the pixels as much. And this has a lot better contrast. This one, the blacks aren't quite as black. Neither one, again, like a cell phone. So these are just very minor differences. But the biggest difference is the physical size of the screen. The Ultimate One has some of its controls as part of the touch screen and they take up real estate. So if you, for example, have four activities, which are the, the rows of what you can put on the screen, the fourth one is half covered on the Ultimate and you have to scroll up a little bit to hit the fourth one. So that might be important to you. If you've got three or less, you're not gonna care. Over here, it's not until you reach five that they become partially hidden. But none of the controls are on the touch screen on the Elite. They're just below where the actual screen area is. The other major difference is, is simply where the screen is on the device itself. On the Elite, they bumped it almost all the way up to the top. The only thing above it is the off button and that turns all current running activities off. For example, you might have one called Watch TV, so it's got your television, maybe your cable box, uh, sound bar, whatever, powered up. If you hit off, if that's running, it'll turn it all off for you with one click. Or if you have Google or Alexa, you can just voice command everything too. Turn off the TV, for example. It works absolutely perfectly. They both do all of the functions exactly the same because these remotes don't actually do any of the work. These are just interfaces for this guy right here, the control hub. This is a smart home hub. Although it is fairly limited, it's not like a smart things or a wink or anything like that, but it does control a lot of very common brands and types of devices. Just think of it as an interface for your remotes. Now that being said, you can have multiple remotes on one hub, just not multiple touch screen remotes. Both of these operate as kind of a master remote. You can add non-touch screen remotes and they have several to choose from. They have basically, both of these actually, without the touch screen, just buttons. So if you don't have any need or want for a touch screen and they truly aren't needed for anything, they. They basically just run macros. These are just basically fancy looking programmable buttons. That's all. If you don't care about that, save yourself a good chunk of change and just get the much cheaper version that are all buttons. It does exactly the same things. So let's talk about the remotes themselves. 
This is one of the things where it's going to depend on exactly what kind of equipment you have and how you use your stuff, which one might appeal to you more than the other. And that comes down to where these physical con control buttons are. If you're old school, not knocking you, but if you're old school and you're still using a Blu-ray player, physical media, you're obviously going to be using the stop, play, fast forward, etc. buttons right here. Super easy to use. For that kind of device, absolutely critical. You need those. Your menu button, up, down, whatever, all that kind of good stuff. They put it on the ultimate one above the screen. Absolutely horrible idea because in order to get them, you have to physically walk your hand up the remote. You hold this remote down at the bottom. It's got a nice curved palm-like section that fits really nicely in your hand and you've got your thumb here and it's it's very light this is lighter than the elite and when you're actually using it your thumb goes right to the volume and channel and d-pad and select buttons but you can't reach the control buttons at all and you have to physically slide it in your hand or hold it with two hands and hit your buttons terrible design they completely fixed that with the elite and they put them right where they should be above the d-pad so the screen is up out of the way when you're holding the elite which is different you don't have quite as pronounced that bulbous section this is heavier but it's weighted better this one is very bottom heavy it feels light and flimsy because this top section is so thin and so light compared to the bottom it just feels like I don't know, you're waving a wand or something. This feels solid. It feels more like a normal remote control. The weight is more evenly distributed up. So as it's in your hand, it doesn't feel like it's tipping at any point. It still fits my hand fine. I've got big hands. It's big enough. They both have the same almost rubbery textured material. It's non-slip, doesn't get sweaty, works fine. Your thumb goes to the exact same location on the volume, channel, D-pad, and select buttons. But now look at that. Your thumb is already hitting all the normal buttons as well. Now, if you're like me and you got rid of physical media players years ago, I have this house hasn't even seen it plugged in. I used a Blueberry player in my last house, but for me now, I rip my discs on my computer and they go right to my Synology 1019 Plus and I stream everything through Plex. Well, you know what? The only buttons on the remote I use are right here. Volume, select, and the D-pad. That's it. I wouldn't care if the other buttons for the controls disappeared. I never literally hit them. So it's going to depend on how you use your devices if that's important to you. Physical media, don't even consider the ultimate one. You're going to have to spend the extra and get the Elite, period. So as far as what you get with both of them, they are 100%, well, 99% identical. You get a charging cradle, one per remote. It has rubber on the bottom, the label ripped off from where I had double-sided tape. I have this on top of my media stand. And that's because it's pretty light. The new one is virtually the same. Sorry, I'm not ripping it up to show you, but it's more circular. Exactly the same fit. They just sit in the cradle and they charge. They don't fall out. They're not stuck in there. They just lift right off spring-loaded power clips, and that's it. They recharge fairly quickly. You get about a week of normal use between charges, a little bit less, maybe a day at most less on this one here. Now, one big thing I've seen comparing these with every freaking article online, they say, oh, this one you can't replace the battery, but the Elite you can. No, that's bullshit. You can replace the battery on both of these. The difference is Logitech will sell you a battery for the Elite, and you have to get a third-party battery for the Ultimate One. All you do is pop this cover open, there's a screw, and you can open it up and replace the battery just like an old-school cell phone. With this, same thing. That's it, you get one screw, one quick connect cord, and the batteries come out, they're dirt cheap, 25, 30 bucks. 
I have yet to even notice any kind of degradation using this for a couple of years now, so I have no idea how long a battery would last. But they do have a lot of functions as far as battery draining. These lights are on, so every time you pick it up, the backlights come on, all the keys are lit, the screens are on, and they do use some power. The one thing I noticed that drains mine pretty quickly is if I have it anywhere like in a cup holder or something and I'm watching a very bass heavy movie and it vibrates, it turns the light on. So make sure to put this somewhere that it's not going to self kick on and that will definitely help your battery situation. Beyond that, uh, the hubs are the same and by the way, you can buy these separately as well. It is a modular system. So you can get a hub alone, you can get uh, a standalone, not the touchscreen, but the standalone remote alone and work it as an IR. You can pair different remotes with different hubs. You can have multiple hubs. You can also control them all with your phone using the app that comes with the hub. And that has all the exact same features and programmability as any of the rest of it. Some people definitely prefer using the app. I don't because it's not as fast as far as just using it. So you, the best way to use this is to make it not lock the phone and dim the screen. So it pretty much operates exactly like the remote. You pick it up, the screen comes on, you put it down, it'll eventually dim it, but you don't have to unlock the phone. Well, that means you need to leave your phone out somewhere and I don't want to leave this on the armrest or in a cup holder to get scratched or anything like that or slip down in a cushion. I don't use my phone like that. I put it in my pocket or when I'm watching a movie, it's not even on me. It's on a counter somewhere. So the other thing is you have to look at it. Even if you've got it on the fastest possible way and you don't have to unlock it. You know, worst case scenario, you do have to unlock it. So you, you pick up your phone, you look at it or you type in a code and then you can do whatever you're gonna do. Change your activity, turn something off, whatever. A few seconds at best, best. With a remote, you don't even have to look at it. You just go, your thumb knows exactly where it is. Turn the volume up, turn the volume down, play, pause. It's right there. You don't have to look at anything. You never have to unlock. That's it. It doesn't get any faster than a physical button remote. That's just me. A lot of people though, they love the app. The app comes free with any hub purchase or with any kit. You also get IR blasters, which are optional. You do have an IR blaster in each hub. The hubs are also Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, so they can control virtually anything. You need to put this in your rack somewhere so that it's gonna blast out the IR out the front and hit whatever devices you're trying to control. For example, if you wanna control your TV. I have the hub inside my media rack, which has a smoked glass door, specifically so the signals can go out, but you can't see through it unless there's bright lights on a display. So I've just got it perched next to one of my amps and it bounces into the room off the back wall and hits the TV just fine. Now I use these guys to hit some of my devices that are pretty jammed in there and I need to kind of get the signal around the front into their receivers wherever they are on the front panels. So you can plug one or two of these directly into the back of the hub and they become another IR emitter. So beyond the normal control of your home theater gear, you can control, like I said, smart home stuff. And that's pretty much gonna be lighting, maybe your thermostat for most people. For me, it's just lighting. So I like to be able to control the lights without speaking because I might be playing a movie, for example, and the movie's ending and I want to turn on the lights. Well, maybe I don't want to stop the movie just so the speakers can hear me give a voice command. I wanna be able to do it by the remote. And maybe I just want to touch a button really easily to turn off the lights when I'm gonna start a movie. Yes, I could do it by my voice. But if I could also do it instantly and silently with a button, 
why not have that capability too? So I did. Now I have a pretty complex setup because my kitchen cabinet lights are IKEA trad free. Great lights. They were touch and go when they first came out, but these days they are refined and they work great. Now, Harmony doesn't work with a lot of stuff. I mean, it's got a good list of what it works with but not everything. And unfortunately, IKEA trod free is one of the things it doesn't work with natively. So one workaround is to, instead of going through the IKEA smart home hub, go through a smart things hub, and you can now sort of pair everything directly into your smart things, and then sort of control it through your harmony. Problems with that are, this is an Ikea remote, also called a device handler, and this is what I use in the kitchen for turning on all the cabinet lights, and it works flawlessly. By the time the button is springing back up, the lights are on. It is instant. When I'm hitting a physical switch, that's exactly what I want. I don't want a second delay as signals go to a third-party server controller like Samsung, over to the internet, back down into my whatever account I'm controlling and then into the devices. It depends on your internet connection, the rest of the internet being bog free. Today, it's crazy. Uh, Facebook Messenger has been nuts. Instagram's been nuts. My Some of my smart home stuff has been laggy because the internet backbones are just in terrible shape today. This is all local. You've got your IKEA hub and all your IKEA lights that you're controlling and your device handler remotes and it's instant. The internet can be down and this still works. That's what I wanted to happen with the Harmony. So instead of just moving everything over to SmartThings, I did a very complex setup using a SmartThings virtual, um, actually a simulated switch. They also have virtual, two different things. A simulated switch, but you don't need a Samsung hub to do that, just a SmartThings account. Then I used a custom software device handler to basically mirror that simulated switch into a simulated contact sensor. And I had to do that because Harmony is pretty sensitive, pretty limited on not only the brands it controls, but the types of things it can map to buttons, which is really dumb. For example, I created these activities, these rows on the screen, because on the ultimate, this is the other physical difference, you don't have any buttons, physical buttons for anything smart home related. You do on the Elite. Down here, they give you two different light buttons, two different plug buttons, and a plus and minus rocker set of buttons. And you can do a lot of different things with these, but don't think of them as universal smart home buttons. Some people are gonna think, oh, well I, I have, brand XYZ of lights, I can just use these two buttons with my lights. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, Philips and Lutron happen to be the two popular ones that these are gonna work with natively, and they work perfectly with those. There are some others that it kind of works with, um, but for Ikea, you've gotta do one of the two things I said. So I've got that working. The cool thing about these buttons are they are dual function. You can tap to, for example, turn the lights on, or actually in my case, I reversed it and tap is off because I want to just tap the button, dim the lights, start my movie. And you can long press it for a second and it'll vibrate to let you know that the long press has been actuated and it does something else. Like in my case, turn the lights on and you can have it control different lights. So for example, when I tap once to turn the lights off, it'll turn off any interior light in my house. So no matter what's on, it's gonna darken it. But long pressing to turn them on doesn't turn on all the lights, it just turns on the lights that I told it to. In my case, my living room seating lights and my under counter lights so that it's not blinding any guests that are getting up after the movie and they can get up go over, turn on the kitchen lights, whatever they want to do, turn on the hall lights, etc. So you can do whatever you want to as far as if it controls it, it can do different things. But 
you got to make sure that your brands are going to be covered. But like I said, with the SmartThings account, it opens the door. It's, it's very complex. I don't even want to get into how I did it. Uh, it, it also involves uh, custom routines in Alexa, I didn't want to say it, <laughs> to further the functionality. But it works, just know it's not easy. So if you have Philips or Lutron, eh, you're golden. Works out of the box like adding anything else. Other than that, these aren't exactly that useful. But getting back to what's on the screen, I have two activities here, one called dark and one called dim. Dark does the same thing as pressing that button. It just actuates the custom simulated switch command to turn everything in the house off. The difference is that's not what this is supposed to do. This is not supposed to work as any kind of momentary switch. So you press that, it issues a command and that's it. It's back to the state it was in before you pressed it. You press one of these, it turns on. So if I press dim, it'll turn out the lights, but it'll show dim as running. The activity is running. So it's, it's like you turned on a TV. I turned on dim or I turned on dark. You know, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So what I had to do was map on and off for those activities to do the same thing. So, you know, you could hit it over and over and all it would do is try to turn off the lights. You couldn't turn the same lights back on. But what I did for dim is created a second activity that all it did is turn on the lights I wanted to. Same thing as long pressing this button down there. So this one button with its dual function replaced two custom activities. And you don't have the weirdness of seeing the activities on or off if you turned off the lights. It, it's just not meant to do it. But on this one, well, that's the only choice you have. You don't have any smart buttons. So I had to make them in activities if I wanted to do that kind of thing with the remote. And it worked. So it was cool to do. But which one is the best? Here's the thing. I like the size of the stuff on the screen better. It's easier to see this stuff. It's easier to hit it with my thumb. My, my thumb covers one activity row at a time very nicely. This is smaller, it's more compact. The physical screen is a little bit bigger, but they also made everything smaller at the same time to fit even more in. You've got about 80% the height of each one of these rows. So my thumb covers more than one row. Luckily, it seems to be very good at detecting which one you actually are trying to press, but my thumb does kind of munch on more than one at a time, or it doesn't on this. The other thing is, this is a very sensitive screen, which makes it even worse that you have to reach up here to grab the physical buttons because you do end up sometimes palming this bottom screen and turning things on or off or sliding the screen. But it's very sensitive. This is just like any kind of modern cell phone. Screen moves with just barely touching it. You don't have to press anything at all. If I want to turn something on, you just have to tap it. That's it. This is like 3D touch on an iPhone. If you want to turn something on, you don't just tap it, you have to press it. It doesn't click or anything, so it doesn't have the haptic feedback like 3D touch, but it's a more deliberate function. It does recognize that you're just touching, and it does that for swiping, and it does it for selecting menu stuff, but for actually turning things on or off, you have to press it. I don't know if I like that. It's just something extra you have to do where this worked just fine by tapping it. And especially since they moved the buttons down here, you're not apt to accidentally hit this for anything. So I'm not sure why they made the press mandatory, but I wish you could turn it off. That would be a better deal for me. I do love the enhanced resolution. That is a big plus. Just looking at the screen, it's easier to read. The contrast is noticeably better. This is still bigger, but this is clearer. So, I mean, best of both worlds would be 
mix the two. Give me a bigger, better contrast and you've got a winner. So that's why I said there are pros and cons to both of them. Now, as far as which one feels the best, it's a toughie. It is really toughy. I'm used to this one. It fits in my palm very well. And because I only use these buttons right here, you know what, it, it just works. You don't have to point this remote at anything. So it's not like you have to put it in any kind of position. It's an RF remote going to the hub and the hub is controlling everything. So I just pick it up out of the, usually the cup holder in one of my seats and hit the volume or hit play pause. This one's just as comfy. It's just balanced differently. It feels like better quality. I have no doubt that they're both built exactly the same as far as longevity and quality of materials. And I mean, they're really similar. Same kind of finishes, same kind of plastics. Neither one have any kind of creaks or groans or flex or anything. They're both solid as a brick. This one's just a little bit heavier, feels a more substantial remote. They're pretty much the same size. So, I mean, it's split in hairs, but not thinking about it, just picking each one up. I like the extra weight of this one. It just feels better. That's it. But neither one's a deal breaker. So there you go. I hope this helps somebody make up their mind, whether or not you want one of these or you want to upgrade from this to this. Is it worth it to you? Uh, like I said, it's really going to depend on what you have and how you use it. If this is going to be important to you or not. If you don't need the functionality of this, you're not going to get a whole lot out of this guy here. It's not like this is some huge quantum leap. It's just a little different. That's it. Anyway, we'll see you next time.